Good stuff here. So what's our first race we're going to be seeing? I think we got a uh, Stanford ODU. Is that right? I see a mark on this. Uh, it might be the one, or I think it's the one before that. Okay, Michigan, D.C.? Yeah, I think that's right, in the 420. So the, the FJs in this flight already went this morning, many hours ago. So we're starting like mid-flight at race 106 with uh, Michigan versus Boston College in the Z420s. Breeze looks good though, yeah. honestly. It's game time. Let's let's get it going. Good looking course. You can see the boats coming up wind. Uh, you want a chair? I think you can anyway. You want a chair? Sure you yeah. can. Great. And uh, equal can. packs. Looks like the finish line is now in place. Nobody's racing say, Yeah, it's on. Can't wait. Am I focused in? Nerves are high because I mean, if you're it's one of the teams that is uh, below ninth, um, you only have one or two more selection. races in the whole regatta. You're going to okay. get eliminated, and um, so you want to win those, go out with a bang. Uh, maybe you get to take one off one of the top teams. I remember uh, back in the day, racing, and you're already eliminated. But if you can knock off the first or second place team and uh, you know be a spoiler, it feels good. It feels real good. ODU is certainly well positioned here racing against Stanford. They would be a huge spoiler if they win that race. No doubt. Uh, any tips, Nick, for sailing in this wind direction? Or I think, I think you'll see that it's uh, going to be a little bit more straightforward. Not as many auto attacks. Um, not as uh, dramatic pressure differences. Um, so I think you're going to see those teams that show some serious straight line wheels um, put the screws to some of the other teams. Um, what do you think some of the teams with some of those skills? I mean, you've got to think Yale is one of the first that comes to mind. Yale is super fast, absolutely. Um, interesting, when I was interviewing uh, Amanda Callahan from Roger Williams earlier, she said that their 2011 championship team was... Uh, faster just a lights out fast team that was their biggest strength she says the team this year uh maybe not quite as fast but really well coordinated really in sync good communication um i think you see that too with uh st mary's i feel like they're really in sync mm -hmm. on the race course yep so our first heat uh what what, what color boats will they be in guys we got z420s so they'll have the white ish sails red one two three is is red that's Michigan, I believe. And blue is 16, 17, 18. That's Boston College. So these are the not the solid colored sails, but sort of the, the striped sails with the St. Mary's Burgee on them. Uh, blue versus red will be the first race. Blue versus red. And not the full red. It's the red, red up high in the sail. Yeah, exactly. And the blue up high in the sail. We're very lucky to have two fleets of boats here at St. Mary's to use. So they have 18 FJs and 18 Z420s. On deck is going to be the Stanford Cardinal and ODU Monarchs. They're also going to be in uh, Z420s, white-ish sails. So they'll be in, uh, what are they going to be in? I think yellow and black. Rotation never good, but those rotations just can't read them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's not your strength. Luckily, I mean, you have you can rest on your laurels. You have other things going for you. So, let's, Mich let's uh, just just review that first heat for us, guys. Uh, Michigan's going to be in red. BC's going to be in blue. Copy that. Yep. Michigan in red, BC in blue, and then uh, the flight order is the same throughout. So we could. Yeah, and then it's going to be yellow and black. Uh, it'll be Stanford in yellow and ODU in black. And then the last race of this flight will be pink and green. So that'll be Navy in pink, St. Mary's in green. That'll be a good race. A little Mesa battle, grudge match. Love the grudge matches. And uh, for some uh, teams, this is their last afternoon of sailing, potentially. Yeah, if you don't make the top eight, this is it. But it's nice that they still get to do 15 full races over the weekend. You get to sail every single team at the regatta, so you get a fair shake. Just looking out, seeing who's active, who's, who's not. As a coach, you're looking out, you want to see your team, you want to see all three of your colors together. 
uh, talking about setup, talking about how the course is laid out. Maybe if you have time, you can go around each mark, check the scope of the line, make sure you got you don't have any trip wires out there. It's always good to do a few runs at the starting line. Uh, you want to know if there's any current. You want to know where those lay lines are to the pin and the boat end. Uh, Nick, where did you usually start as a, uh, a college sailor? I was uh, down at the pin a little bit and in the middle was my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I kind of still am somewhat magnetized to the pin. Hard to stay away. The pin is awesome. It's fun. It's a great place to sail. So, of course, as we ramp up our graphics, uh, we're just going to ask you guys to review those colors a few more times. Sure. Uh, so, Kent is getting them back in the studio. So, right if you just give us the top three or top four, that would be very helpful. And, uh, of course, the viewing audience back home, I'm sure, is taking note. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, first race, race number 106, is uh, Michigan in red. Boston College in blue. And then we're going to have uh, next up Stanford in yellow and Old Dominion in black. Sure hope we're getting these right. If you are, I'm double checking as I look out of the race Thank course. you, Nick. And then uh, the third race of the day, last race of that particular flight, is uh, Navy in pink, St. Mary's in green. Also, And uh, while we're at it, big shout out to uh, Kent Rich, Colton Wright, Dan Egan, the guys who are like actually making this broadcast happen while Nick and I drink waters and, you know, talk about how we're underappreciated. <laughs> Pre Madonnas. <laughs> but no, seriously, this is a ton of fun. We're having a great time, and these guys are true professionals. It's nice to just watch sailboat racing. Yeah. It has been a blast, and I really think it's just going to get better and better. Uh, once we get into the ne next round, no race will be easy. I think we'll see a lot of close battles and, uh, yeah, some swings of momentum, perhaps. Yeah, momentum's big right now, isn't it? Because this is sort of a, a mellow day. Yesterday was just a barn burner all day long, cranking out races. Today, there's been a lot of time to sit and stew and dwell. <laughs> and uh, a few of the teams that didn't win this morning had to sit on it for a while. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's not fun, man. Yeah. And then you're thinking about your new situation. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who comes out swinging. I'm also, I think, race of the afternoon probably be Yale for St. Mary's. They haven't faced each other yet. They're the top two in the standings. So uh, I think that's in the last flight. Hopefully, we get there today. Oh, we're getting there. That'll be a barn burner. Yale has only lost to Georgetown so far. They only have one loss. Ooh, boat's going upwind. Uh, looks, you know. Looks great. We got enough breeze. Crews are quite aren't on the rail, but I think I wouldn't be surprised here uh, after a couple races. We'll get some crews on the rail, and it'll be real drag racing conditions. Is the left favorite? I seem to remember in this wind direction coming up here and getting up under the bluff and getting some big lefties. Am I just making that up? No, I think you definitely can see that. Definitely can see that. Because we have a little bit of a, a point of land sticking out into the river there. The sea breeze is coming straight down the river from the south. Yep. It's a challenging place to sail. I can't say I mastered it in my four years, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Every day is a little different. Uh, and I'd say this is a maybe a slight uh, rarity for the sea breeze to come in this early on a day like today, a big transition day. Mm-hmm. I think there's a little gradient pushing it, actually, looking at the forecast. Uh, it was supposed to kind of swing around from east to south as the day went on, combined with maybe a little thermal. We have some puffy clouds out there. Should be fun. I think also with this new angle, we're going to have a great, great view of start, first beats. No, uh, no boats are going to be in our way. True. Uh, a lot of times the hangout zone is to the right of uh, right of the marks, or I'm sorry, right of the starting line. So we're going to have a great view of those that first all important drag race um, off the line, and then uh, 
Yeah, just great viewing in general from this perch up on the hill. Yeah, we're going to have to zoom in pretty hard to get out to that, that far side of the, uh, the race course for the second beat. <clears throat> but we'll try to get as much of it as we can. We actually have a perfect sight on the starting line. I got the orange, the yellow buoy, and the red uh, flag perfectly lined up. So we should have a good idea of who wins the race. Imagine we have uh, Becca on the water. Maybe we could get an early uh, check-in from her. Right on. And uh, see what she's seeing out on the water. She's out there, and uh, she's on the water. She's going to be co phoning in shortly here. Becca Dellenba, champion in her own right, I think, as a junior sailor. Yeah, youth champion. Um, she won the 420 Youth Champs uh, at one point. I think that was uh, 2006, five, something like that. And then a standout at, at Dartmouth after. So she's got some uh, alumni pride recently after the uh, <laughs> after the women's win over there. What yeah. a <coughs> she is pretty excited about that. And of course, uh, Rebecca joins us on the line. How's it look uh, from the water, Rebecca? It's good. That's great. Uh, talk, talk us through uh, some of the teams you're seeing sailing by you. I know the boys have a few questions for you. Uh, Nick, uh, what do you want to say to Becca? I'm just curious, uh, are you seeing any crews out on the rail? It looks like maybe just starting to see some shoulders out action. Uh, I'm just curious how, how people uh, tend to be set up out there. Sounds good. And John, I know you were uh, interested in uh, some of the teams on the bubble. Yeah, Becca, you see any teams uh, who look like they're not really sailing around together? Do you see any teams that are spread out, like all three boats in different parts of the uh, pre-start area, not really staying well coordinated? Uh, I would say uh, probably Stanford looks like they are sort of individually going up the course and working on boat speed. Um, teams like Charleston. Nice. Okay, uh, give us a call after the first or second heat, Rebecca. Sure. Three minutes to go for the BC, right? Yeah, yeah, BC Michigan and BC. Means. Red and blue in the 420s. This is going to be good stuff. Uh, looking out on the race course right now, you can see like a lot of boats sailing in every different direction. That's because all the the whole fleet's out there getting warmed up before the next flight. But it is red and blue, the white sails with the red and blue stripes on the top. Those are the ones we're going to watch in the first race. Let us know your questions out there if you're watching. We have that technology. I believe we do. We have a couple of uh, St. Mary's undergrads working the social media. They're doing a great job. Hit them up. Yeah, woo! Big shout outs here. Time to go to the water, boys? I think so. Yeah, I heard horns. Let's get zeroed in on those red and blue Z420s.
red and blue Z420s. So a lot of people think, uh, you know, maybe thinking at home, BC, Michigan. This will be over shortly. We love Michigan. But uh, don't count them out. We have learned quickly that you do not count out the uh, the Wolverines. We like their style. We think they're uh, well practiced. They've been facing off head to head with their uh, conference rivals from Wisconsin in preparation for this regatta. And uh, they gave a huge scare on the first day to College of Charleston. Charleston barely scrapped back into the win. So, uh, yeah, if uh, Michigan beat Boston College in this race, that would be a massive spoiler. Looks like they're just approaching the line now. I see the boats paired up. Yeah, coming up on 30 seconds, uh, both the lured most uh, boats caught below the lay line for the pin. I still think they're low. I think it's going to be a real challenge for them to get over the line. The middle pair barely fetching themselves. Yep, so that's the, the green mark there is the pin end of the line. The race committee boat is off a little further distant with the red flag on it. And we Ten have seconds. Michigan Oops. in red, BC in blue. Game on, let's go. Afternoon of racing. Michigan strong at the pin. But BC running away at the boat. Michigan looks okay in the middle by my eye as well. Yeah, look at this. Ooh. Looks like two boats are spinning. Those two leftmost boats off the starting line. Somewhat moot point, I believe, because they're both spinning simultaneously. Plus one only has to do two, or only has to do one while the other does two. Look at that. Interesting. Interesting stuff there. Well, okay, we're going upwind here. We have, uh, looks like Michigan, boat number two, is doggedly hanging on to the lead. But BC looks solid with uh, a, at least a two and a three. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them sail fast forward here and try to turn that into a one-two. Boston College is a super fast team. Thank you, thank you. And I know yesterday they at least once just did a straight-up chase play out of the two-three and tried to go for a, uh, a passing one, two. So boat 18 there coming across is now the one. Yep. And uh, Michigan pressure on here. They need to clamp down on, on boat 16. Hold on. Boston College set up well for this team race. We have Rebecca Good. calling in on, off that start. Rebecca, okay. tell us about the start. Yeah, well, uh, I guess it's kind of shows us umpire nerds for you. They're not messing around on this start. Both uh, BC um, and uh, that uh, Michigan flied the pin for 42, and they also had a collision. So BC doing four circles right off the bat. That's going to be a, a tough to come back from both 17 there. They are deep, aren't they? Uh, that's we were watching that. Uh, so one boat actually spun four circles. Nice, nice. All right, well, give us the update right at the as the second heat starts. Wow. Yeah. So as we talked about, uh, a couple, the pinmost boats were caught early, deep in the box, below the below the line, gets get caught uh, down speed and had to rely on their rudder to get them over the line. Yeah, I think that leaves BC. You know, they really only have two horses in this race at this point. They need to try to go play one. And that looks like a, what they're doing. They're fleet racing right now, a fleet racing mentality, hitting shifts and puffs, and they're going to try to just convert a one-two combo and, and sail away. Boat 16 is definitely climbing right now. Yeah, they're fast. They're quick. But one with a decent lane in between them. All they're thinking about is, can I get to 18 and get a Lee bow on? So here we go. Yeah, pressure is on boat one. And watch 16 is going to creep down to one. Tricky though, because uh, one can ask for room to tack, perhaps. I'd say 16 should swoop down for a pin, maybe. That's what I'd say, but... It, nope, too late. Oh, Go no. one tax. Maybe prematurely there. I don't know if they have enough of 18. Gonna 
mix it up with some tacks, see if they can sucker a bit. But they need to clamp on 18. Get the Lee bow. Ooh, I don't know. I think 18 has Ooh, a elevator up. starboard piece on them. I don't know. Maybe not. One's in there. If one can hold this, you know, for a good long time, boat three is catching up. They could have a chance to just go play two. Oh, no, one is locked. They're locked to leeward. Cannot tack. But going slow. BC winning, yes, right now, but going slow. Getting tight right there. Couple See if of three teammates. can mix it up. Very tight. Boston College, one, two, around the mark. We told you not to slight these Michigan Wolverines. They're giving Boston College all kinds of trouble here, even though Boston College is winning. Uh, what do we have going there? Yeah, a little, a little luff. luff that tells you they're nervous. Here we go, Michigan. Wolverines are scrapping. I like it. Boston College guys in the lead are thinking, where is our third boat? <laughs> sure wish he were somewhere in here. Spin in four circles. That's why you gotta have good 720s. I'm gonna meanwhile try and keep an eye on the next race in line. That uh, has some some, big some implications. serious implications. Yeah, with... let's switch over to the yellow and black on the starting line for a moment. That is uh, Stanford in yellow, Old Dominion in black. Let's see how they get off the line. Again, 20 seconds to go. It seems like both ODU boats a little bit early. They're in full stop mode and going to be challenging for them to get off the line here. ODU slightly stacked here at the pin. Ooh, well, that's going to be challenging. Yeah, that looks tight. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more flags. Yep, boat 12 for ODU is definitely doing penalty turn. Early advantage Stanford for sure. Now uh, Chris Love uh, on the chat board uh, on live stream here said we want to see uh, more of the Cardinal and he wants to learn about how uh, the Cardinal got in this situation where they have to fight for their very life to get into the round of Elite Eight. First off, shout out Chris Love, how you doing my man? Good to see you're on the uh, chat board. Looking forward to seeing you a couple days here. Um, so Stanford, they came out and uh, they lost the two first races of the regatta. Um, and they got into a little bit of a funk early. But then they recovered pretty strongly yesterday. They had some big wins, um, notably a big win against St. Mary's midday. So that was huge. Um, but they are in a position where they really want to win both races. So we still got the cameras, I believe, on yellow and black. That's... Uh... Oh, do we have Becca on the line here? We do. We have Becca on the line. Becca, tell us about Jeez. that start. Uh, another red flag there. The boat 12 ODU at the pin, uh, getting flagged for 42. Umpires are we see, down BC's here. BC's getting right over here. Sure, uh, in this, you know, five to seven knots, that people are getting off the starting line there. And uh, that's that's all good. Yeah, that's. Uh, People are getting close to the line, getting it, having to be super slowed down and, and use uh, you know some kinetics to get it going. That's why the umpires are out there. I, I think this yellow and black race, um, Stanford looks solid, winning all three pairs. This is certainly a, a must-win race for them to try to make it into the Elite Eight. Looking real strong up the beat. Looking strong. Um, just briefly, can we switch over to the red and blue the first race they're heading down to the lured mark just want to make sure that boston college still has their one two combo tell us uh, becca do you see the lured mark yeah we do looks like uh boat one's getting in the mix and breaking up this one two 18th looking at the mark trap and uh while all that's happening 17 who did four circles at the start is finally catching up here uh so more action looks like uh bc is maybe looking at a play four uh instead of a play one here Nice job, Michigan, running over the play there, breaking but, up the play one. But also nice job, BC, um, converting back to play four. So they did a good job. Uh, Thanks, Becca. 
If we would just get these other boats that aren't racing out of our way, we could show you. We got uh this insanity out there. Do, looks uh, like we had a Michigan boat do a 360 there. So now uh, Boston College is one three four on the uh, bottom reach leg, heading into Mark four. So advantage Boston College, but nice job Wolverines keeping it interesting. Wow. They're tough. They're tough. Michigan is tough really condensed here. Boston College doing a great mark trap there. Making it all happen. 1817 converted. And it might be not be too far away from a 1-2-3. Great conversion at the bottom of the downwind from the Boston College Eagles going from uh, sketchy play one, back into play four, then converting that into a play, back into play one. Yeah, nice job, BC. I mean, we would expect nothing less, but they needed to make that play at that lured mark, and they did. For sure. So Boston College doing what they need to do, beating the Wolverines pretty soundly now in the last beat over there. And at the windward mark, we have the yellow and black check in with Stanford and Old Dominion. Uh, Stanford and Yellow also 1-2-3 right now, uh, really soundly ahead of Old Dominion. So Stanford doing what they need to do, coming out with a sense of urgency today. It's it's win or go home. Yeah, we could see a little spinker play here. We were talking about that yesterday. Uh, that's the technical term for uh, if you're in a 1-2 combo, your third teammate just starts slowing the race down behind, and you can see how far the Old Dominion boats in black have to catch up to those one two boats for Stanford. What you got for me? Chips. I'm <laughs> just kidding. So, good. so we're still on yellow and black here on the downwind, I believe. It's a blowout. It might be time to go back to the next race because the next one is huge as well. Uh, we have Navy in pink and St. Mary's in green at the starting line. So let's switch over to the starting line. And this is uh, race 108, Navy in pink, St. Mary's in green. 30 seconds. Who's looking strong, John? Hard to see at this point, actually. I think I see St. Mary's controlling the ley line, the pin, looking very strong there to lured in the middle pair, but trailing in at the boat. Yeah, I don't know if that St. Mary's boat, people are having so much trouble getting around the pin, they look yeah. a bit low to me. Yeah, they're not going to hit the line with pace, that's for sure, but I think their middle guy is. So we should see nine, yep, nine's going to go through the back. Nice start. Hey, and St. Mary's spinning at the boat, oh, so oh, advance. Oh. Ooh. And what's going on there? I think Navy spinning down at the pin. Okay. So, uh, even Steven. Even Steven. Navy, or sorry, yeah, Navy stacked to the right side of the course with their twosome. St. Mary's can control the left. So, yeah, let's watch this race unfold. Navy in pink, St. Mary's in green. St. Mary's currently sitting in second place and Navy in third place overall. I've liked the left side, and so I'm going to call this uh, slightly in favor to, uh, to St. Mary's right now. Big, big matchup to watch. Cameramen are 14 and 8. We want to see that drag race. Yeah, everybody's just kind of drag racing right now. 14 actually. and 8 is what we'd like to see. Hopefully we're watching 14 and 8 right now, drag racing out towards the right side. And uh, we've got Rebecca phoning in with all the start action. How we how yeah. was that start? Uh, so uh, St. Mary's Navy is pretty intense start. You can see uh, all three pairs were nice to get. Get a snack, John. You want something? Hold on.
Uh, just like we've seen those last few races, two boats in the back of the fleet uh, right off the bat. Think it's uh, think it's nerves uh, coming down here to the some of the final flights. Sounds good. We'll check in in a bit. I, I like what I'm seeing right now from St. Mary's extending. Boat 15 is extending on boat 7. Uh, and then they're in a tight battle on the far side of the course, boat 8 and boat 14. So that's a bit of a drag race on the right. But early advantage St. Mary's, I'd say. They could at least make this a play 2 and potentially a play 1. What happened with that first cross between 14 and 8? I stepped away for a second. Uh, I don't think they've had one yet. Okay. I think that they've been drag racing out towards that side. Here we go, big. There it is, 14 Lee Bows. 14 Lee Bow. Looks like they have good positioning there. Very good, and, and boat 15 is in a position to come down and, and swoop and help if needed. But are they? I mean, is 7 going to get there? If 7 gets to 14, um, there's no excuse for that. There is no excuse. Balance. It's called balancing. Uh, it looks like maybe they are. their balance was too late. Yeah, you're right. That was uh, potentially a mental error there. St. Mary's just got too far away, and uh, Seven's going to be able to mix this up. Yeah, boat 14 is in a bit of a fight now. They've got naval uh, midshipmen on either side of them. Wow. Luckily for St. Mary's, uh, they do they are not in last, so they have a little bit of insurance plan. Now, why is the uh, the one for St. Mary's not coming back and, and mixing it up with them? A little bit of caution? Well, oftentimes, uh, mistakes can come right after mistakes, you know? Mm, right. So they know that they missed the opportunity to balance. I don't know. I, I think if they went and mixed it up right now, their teammate in 13 yeah. might slip by the whole pack. Yeah. And then they're looking at a 1-2. A, a Man. Missed, op missed opportunity for St. Mary's. 13 looks good right now, though. They're climbing. I think they might be on ley line. They make that pass back, though. They're 1, 2, 3 around the mark. It could be. Could have been. But hey, 1, 2, 5 uh, will do it. And it looks like that's what they're going to have. Maybe I'm just, uh, you know, Nick, you're ang husband. angry alumni. Angry. That's, you know, you do have to remember, we both stopped doing this 10 years yeah. ago. Uh, yeah. We're senile now. Mm -hmm. Nice job, St. Mary's, one, two, five, in a critical race between the number two team in this regatta and the number three team. Maybe one, two, four here, just that little bit. Oh, yep, that they got a piece of them. That little bit matters. Sphincter time. You know it. <laughs> um, and just so everybody's uh, updated on the, the races we were watching earlier, um, Boston College did indeed beat Michigan and um, Stanford is beating Old Dominion with a 1-2 about to finish. So Stanford doing what they need to do against Old Dominion. If you can hear me eating at home, apologies. Nick is having a croissant, everybody. <laughs> culture, bringing some culture to this team. Exactly. Wicked guy. Looking, uh, <laughs> looking good for the St. Mary Seahawks downwind. They they're really only have one boat chasing them. They have the one-two combo. There's a Navy boat in third, reasonably close behind. And then the uh, the rest of the race is pretty far aft of that. St. Mary's is having a great regatta. Nick, one of your early favorites. Alma mater, getting it done. Steady Eddie. That's a big part of it too, uh, getting over those mistakes and, and a beauty of team racing as well in that you can make a mistake and get bailed out and uh, and teams that can move on from that both uh, both within the race and after races. Um, yeah. A big deal. I feel like uh, both St. Mary's and Yale have a lot of confidence in all three boats. So if one boat maybe makes a small error, the other two are not phased one little bit. Yeah. They're right back in it. Whereas maybe there might be a few teams here that uh, have a weak link or a perceived weak link and the other two teammates are a little bit sensitive about what that boat does.
Well, it looks like St. Mary's has it locked up here. So we switch over to the uh, the red and the blue boats uh, approaching the windward mark. I'm thinking that's the the next flight. So we're back in the FJs there with the solid red and solid blue sails. That's Georgetown in red and University of Washington Huskies in blue. Yeah, Huskies Huskies giving giving the Hoyas some problems here. Yep, got, you got one of the that blue boat is in a in in between the two Georgetown boats. Uh, Georgetown also looks like they have a, a last there in red. Let's yeah, or cool. uh, maybe not. Might be crossing. But... Nice job, U Dub. Yeah, hanging tough here, making them work for it. This would be another huge spoiler race. Here's a bit important cross. Looks like Georgetown coming through the back. I think U uh, Dub really. Ooh, a little cautious. Oh, that was interesting. A little flat tack there. I, I think U-Dub doesn't want to let that guy get to the right of him, and as a result, you know, they're going to get peeled off. That was nice. Uh, the Georgetown boat ducked, and as Washington tried to tack, Georgetown luffed up underneath them, forced Washington into a flat tack, and uh, that allowed Georgetown to get the one-two. Mm. Hoyas, any kind of mistake, they're going to take advantage of it. Quick to pounce. Still in last though, so they're uh, they're not out of the woods yet. Now Georgetown is in in the pressure situation. They're one of those teams, along with Stanford and College of Charleston, that are really at risk of being eliminated and not making the Elite Eight round. Um, so Georgetown has this race, and then they face Charleston. So that's going to be uh, some really important racing for all those teams. Looks like Georgetown's getting it done with a one-two right now. I got a text from a, from a viewer out there wondering when we're coaching, what our favorite drills are. Oof. I don't know. That's a toughie. I like rudderless sailing. Mm. Yeah, me too. I think that's a huge thing for speed and getting feel. Um, Hate to break up this coaching clinic, but no maybe problem. let's uh, swing it over to the starting line and uh, check out this next race between yellow and green. That's uh, Charleston in yellow and Wisconsin in green. Do I have my colors right there? No. Nope. Yellow and black. Yellow and black, sorry. Wisco in black. Charleston, again, they're one of those teams they need to keep winning races, um, and Wisco would be a great spoiler here. Charleston, though, looking very strong off the line. They could use a they could use a quick easy one two race. You know, they haven't yeah. had too many uh easy yeah. breather races. They're facing Georgetown next and potentially that could be a winner take all who moves on and who does not um, situation. This round of 16, the preliminary round robin is starting to wind down. We're on race uh 110 is what we're watching right now go upwind and there's only 120 races in this whole round so 10 races left and after that half the field is eliminated the bottom eight are done yeah. I know. Charleston looks very good on this upwind winning all three pairs potentially one two three a little bit of a battle on the far right side couple attack exchanged on the far windward uh, windward beat between green and pink it's still st. Mary's uh, versus what was that oh, that was um that was st. Mary's and Navy All right yeah, big win for st. Mary's, Mary's there yeah and a tough loss for Navy that's yeah. gonna could put them down more than a spot. Potentially. I think there's going to be a big shakeout here with amongst these top teams. Looking forward to that St. Mary's Yale race in the final flight. Stay tuned for that one. We'll probably just go for an exclusive cover on the video for that. So uh, still got Charleston in yellow, Wisconsin in black. 
Charleston continuing to dominate that upwind. Pretty much perfect team racing conditions right now. Flat water, uh, breeze about five or six knots, mm -hmm. and some shifts and puffs, but nothing too wacky. St. Mary's River doing it again. Glorious. It looks glorious. Mm -hmm. Wow, you can look across the course there, you see the Cougar is perfectly balanced in those yellow boats on the same ladder run. For those of you that don't sail, the wind is coming from the left to the right, and a ladder run indicates the boats that are even across the course, and that's uh, what we're seeing right now. Those three boats are evenly close to that windward mark, keeping the opponents behind at bay. Cougars putting on a clinic here against Wisco. They were due for a clinic. They They've were... had some shaky moments, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> I think that big cheer that they let loose uh, before they went out sailing this afternoon hasn't fired up. They know that uh, they need to perform, so. Yeah, they're fighting for Put their lives here. Shut up. Well, uh, should we go back down to the starting line? Just keep, uh, keep the feed fresh. This one is orange and green. The Gauchos. Yeah, Santa Barbara in orange and uh, Texas A&M in green. Two teams that we haven't seen a lot of yet, but uh, they're both facing elimination. And this will be either their last or second to last race. But uh, this Santa Barbara team, a lot of these sailors uh, are really fast, and they have some really good laser sailors on their team. Um, yeah, we got Ian Stokes, uh, Stephen Long, and Grant Ricken. Uh, all pretty young. Yeah. Um, pretty Their entire young team, even the crews too, are all uh, either freshmen or sophomores. Yeah, Natalie Davidson's 16, Ginger Lucky 16, and Christina Miller just coming out of her freshman year. So um, these guys, I got a feeling they're going to come back. And then I hope they do. next year, they could be, uh, you know, they could be knocking on the door of the final eight. That would be awesome. They sail in a beautiful location. Santa Barbara is just a fantastic piece of the world. So they are in orange, looking pretty good against the Tamug team, Texas A&M Galveston in green. I think this is going to be a pretty good race. No. Maybe not. Maybe not. Looking like uh, advantage gauchos. Gauchos are fast. Yeah, you can see the, the boat speed advantage. It's always nice, you know, uh, Stephen Long is a great laser sailor. Um, laser sailors tend to be speed oriented when they get to college sailing, especially when they're underclassmen. Uh, they like to just make the boat go fast. And that's a nice thing to have on your team. It takes a few years to get used to the uh, boat handling and, and the teamwork required for college sailing, but uh, it's a good foundation. We're, we'll keep watching this race for the moment, but just so everybody knows, the next one um, is going to be really, really a good one. Boston College versus Roger Williams. Nisa grudge match. Nisa grudge match, no doubt. But for now, we're on the Gauchos of Santa Barbara versus the Aggies of Texas A&M at Galveston. You ever been to Galveston? It's a nice spot. No. Really good wind down there. I Great sea breeze. They have the high winds there. They do, yeah. And, and uh, I've been to a few practice sessions there, a few laser regattas. It's definitely warm, I'll tell you that, in the summertime, but they do get a nice breeze. That's where they, like... Surf freighter waves, I think. Correct. I've seen a video yeah. of that. For miles. Yeah. Uh, we got Rebecca Dellenbar checking in from the water. How are we doing, Becca? Hi, we're good. Just a quick update. Uh, breeze is down now. It's maybe four and a half to five knots, so races are definitely taking a lot longer. And it looks like they're starting to uh, shuttle out uh, teams instead of having the boats go all the way to the dock. That's certainly taking a long time and holding up these races. Uh, that's good. So they're going to try and keep this thing moving, and uh, we're seeing less and less boats come in here to the dock, um, and they're coming out as in their own team boats. Yeah, uh, Michigan just started heading in and got the word that they're going to be 
Thanks, Becca, for that. We'll be back to you shortly. No problem. Yeah, great update uh, from Becca out there. So there doesn't look, some of them are rotating in here, some of them aren't. Just trying to keep the keep the races going, maximize uh, maximize races in the sea breeze. It's a bit refreshing today to have a slightly more relaxed pace because yesterday was so frantic. It was just constant racing. We had one maybe 20 minute delay yesterday where the boats came in for a, a brief lunch break, but it cranked out over 100 races yesterday in no time at all. It was pretty insane. That was uh, that was intense. A bit Seriously. of a marathon, wasn't it? They just kept coming at us. We had di we had daylight. We could have finished the whole round. They could have. They could have. I think the limiting factor, honestly, uh, is the umpires a lot of times in that situation. The umpires don't get breaks. They don't come in. They just go from one race to the next. And after uh, eight or nine hours, you start to see sideways, and, and you don't want the umpires to be tired, and, and you won't get uh, bad calls. Got to have some compassion for the people out in the water making it all happen. Yeah, volunteers, all of them. Of course, we've got a big crowd here on the beach. <laughs> Happy team racing fans everywhere. Give everybody at home a big wave. That's right. Parents, Stanford. Ah, look at that. As we're checking out the crowd, just give you an update from the course. Cougar's still in firm command. Um, and really, next thing we're going to check out is that uh, Boston College Eagles versus Roger Williams Hawks. Yeah, I see them. They're warming up on the starting line right now in the, uh, the blue and the red Z420s. They look antsy. They look ready to go. I haven't heard horns yet. I think they're just uh, keeping their boat handling warm and... They know that this is a huge race that could have long implications into the final four or even to the championship. I gotta think we have a bunch of uh, Roger Williams fans online, big team racing enthusiasts. A lot, of, uh, a lot of team racing happens there in Rhode Island. I bet you we have some uh, viewers yeah. checking it out. Pretty uh, good alumni group there too. Um, I know they have an awesome new boathouse that's about to be built. Yeah. Um, that's gonna go from being a great place to sail to an unbelievable place to sail once they have that facility. Yeah, right there in Melville gave, Bay. You gave Colton a shout out earlier. Colton, what's hard up? hard at work uh, doing his thing. Check him out. He's single, ladies. <laughs> Colton Wright, man <laughs> in the camera. He's the man doing the morning videos, doing the updates, and uh, there he is. Production oh, shot. Yeah, thanks. a bit of a lull here. We have uh, a few races on the course still, but they are kind of blowouts. Yep. Talk I know, I'm boys. waiting. I'm waiting for uh, BC uh, Odeo. Me too. Oh, no, BC uh, Roger Williams. Yep. Keeping mentally fresh here.